Hey, of course I have some updates to show you in my butterfly garden from over the weekend. Let's check in the lepidarium. There's some new people in here. First, I moved the monarchs to the downstairs apartment <laughs> because the um, cutting that I brought in for the sulfur was really tall. And um, I've really found out like that the woody stem cuttings last longer on the privet sunna, which tend to be a longer stem cutting. But then look how huge, I'm trying to find my guy, <laughs> my little guy, he's long. Look how long he is. This one I believe is going to be an orange barred sulfur. I think the clouded sulfurs or cloudless sulfurs are more the green and blue yellow ones. Look how long it is. So this guy's going to be pupating soon. The other one's right down there. And the third one's down there in the corner and it's getting ready to pupate. Isn't that fabulous? I'm going to have a sulfur butterfly. I've got a monarch caterpillar in the process of pupating right here right now. And look how big my, oh, well, this little gopherly guy, he keeps coming over. He won't stay at his place. But my zebra long wings, look how big they are. You know how I was doing the floral tubes and the refills, which are working great. But now I'm also doing this where I, <laughs> hi, 221 BC kombucha, I love you. Berry hibiscus, my favorite. I have tons of these bottles, so this is a perfect way to reuse them. These people don't know who I am, but I love them. Um, anyway, I'm doing clusters <laughs> of milkweed in these bottles because I can get more in there. But then I cut them shorter so they're not like getting all tangled with each other. Because when I go to pull one of these out, like they're all hooked to each other. And it, it, this is just, this is just going to be easier to work with. So we're doing both. I've done a little bit of work back here. And we're going to be quiet because the babies are in the nest. Mom and Daddy are both out of the nest, and I don't want them to think I'm up to anything over here. But I just want to show you the wild lime in the corner I really trimmed. And now it can grow in fuller, but it's looking much better. And I checked everything I trimmed off of it, and there were no eggs. So the wild lime is the host plant to the giant swallowtails. They're the little caterpillars that have the adaptation that make them look like bird poop or a scary serpent. And they host on the wild lime. And one of you asked me about like the size of the wild lime or is there a way to control it, I think. And what I've noticed about them is it all depends on the size of the pot. If you put them in the ground, that's, that's an unlimited pot. <laughs> they get pretty big, like the one I just showed you in the corner or the one the bird's nest is in. But if you put them in a pot, they'll grow to a certain size and kind of stay there. For example, I have this one sitting here on the wall of my zinnia garden. And look how cute it is. It's like a little topiary wild lime. And this is how the bigger it's gotten because it's in this little pot. It hadn't occurred to me um, until I was thinking about when that person asked me that, yeah, they kind of do because this one's been in this pot for a couple years and this is all the bigger it's gotten. The leaves are even tinier. So I think that's, that's really cool. And then these ones that have moved up into the potted tree house. My husband's actually working on moving the rest of the trees up now and then I'll go arrange them. But these ones, you know, only look at all three of them. They're all in the same size pot and they're all about the same height. 
They also do really well as cuttings if you bring them in to raise the caterpillars, but the cuttings don't root. But the cuttings last, so that's a good thing. Like if you want to put your wild lime in the ground, um, you can. You can just take cuttings off of it, put them in the floral tubes, and you're good to go. You just need to have the caterpillars. I'm waiting. Where are you, giant swallowtails? I know my giant swallowtail overwintered with me. I had two of them. They closed a while ago, so I'm ready for some eggs. Okay, I'm going to go do some work with my pentas because I've heard. I've heard the word, and I've got to get more pentas to the nectary. Well, it's the next day, and potting tree house is not completely done, but the trees are up there. I'm going to go show you. Um, on the way back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, there was a pathway where there were things growing that just kind of kept getting in the way. And when you repeatedly travel through your garden, you create your own sort of little roadways. While the roadway that was created by me already, I didn't love. It wasn't a natural way to walk. Let me show you. Walking this way through my garden, I would come up here and to get to the tree house, I go around the bend right here. It's a sharp curve, so like if you're carrying a lot of stuff, it's not an easy walk around. And I have this elephant ear. Look at it. I love elephant ears. Um, my husband has always been like, we don't need any more. Just like I love the split leaf, my giant split leaf right here. Well, in order, now that this thing has grown huge, in order for this walkway to be usable, I would have to keep cutting these off. And I don't want to do that because I love it. Look, just across the way, I have more hidden in the corner. That's where I put them all. So they're out of the way. And now my whole tree house is surrounded by elephant ears. There's even one in it. <laughs> Let me show you. Look right here. It's in a pot. Elephant ear. I love elephants. I love elephants so much, y'all. They are just, just the most incredible creatures. And they're such honorable, majestic beings. There's a squirrel right there. He's just sitting there watching me like I'm TV. <laughs> okay, so now that I'm in the tree house, well, let me show you what it looks like right now. Here's my little squirrel friend. He's up on the side of the tree going up now. See him? Okay, so from the elephant ear, going over, all the potted trees are right here. And I'm really not going to do much to move them except move them like to the edges so I can walk through the center here and they'll be all around me. And when they're blooming, that is just going to be the coolest thing. My pawpaws, um, oh look, it's got, look, 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 look. It's got a little bud, my pawpaw. Um, I'm going to move that into a more shadier spot. But the rest of them, well, the spice bush, they like more shade too. And then I also moved all my growing back giant milkweeds up here. These are all the cuttings that I took off of my plants to feed the caterpillars. And then I would put the little stubby stem stump into a pot and they grow back. I mean, look at these. So I'll leave all these in pots and just use them for feeding the caterpillars and hopefully they'll grow back a little faster. Look, there's already an egg on that one. <laughs> hopefully, they'll... oh my gosh, there's an egg on that one too. Okay, stop looking at that. Hopefully they'll grow back and I'll be able to rely on these to feed them and let the actual ones in the ground grow, plus all of my swamp milkweed. So I'm gonna go move all of these around and then I'll tell you about what I'm gonna do about my little walkway. Alrighty then, there we go. 
a nice little border of potted trees in the potted tree house. I moved these two pawpaws up here by the giant milkweed. Um, mostly because I want them up so I can remember to come and repot them. But right now they're doing fine. But they're in smaller pots. That's why I want them up. And the little miniature frog pond <laughs> is still here. And look how easy it will be to come and check over these wild limes and look for eggs, which there aren't any. But it'll be easy to look for. <laughs> and then here's the view of my garden from up here in the treehouse. Okay, next, the little space down the steps where my wafer ash tree is. My wafer ash is going to get some special attention because that little triangular shaped garden bed has never done much. Um, there are some caladiums in there and I had some Joe Paw weed in there last year, which did all right, but it wasn't like a big hit with the pollinators like I read about. So it was certainly nothing like the Bushmen, which I'm growing some for the nectary. I'll let you know when they get delivered. Um, so that being said, I'm just gonna change the shape of that space. And if any caladiums come up, I can dig them up and move them. So the triangle I'm talking about is right there, up to there and over there. And then the little walkway went right through there. But that little walkway doesn't work for me. So I'm closing it. You can see this fence post. I already pulled it back all the way to the step. It used to end at that last piece of border grass. And it went all the way up to the point. So I'm actually going to close off this space. And honestly, if any of the caladiums come up, which you can see they already are in the pot right there. But if any more come up, I can put them in this area because this that used to be a walkway will become garden space. And I'm going to take out all of this border grass and I'll actually move it to the other end to kind of make a curve around the wafer ash tree. All right. Next time you see it, it'll be done. And I'll be sweaty and I'll probably have the hair up. We'll see. Okay, I've run into a little thing, but I already know how I'm going to fix it. So I was so brilliant <laughs> when I'm putting this walkway, there's weed block all under it. And I don't want to chop through the weed block to start the border grass there at the corner and bring it up. So this walkway right here. And there's already border grass going all down there, so there doesn't need to be a fence post too. So I'm gonna take that fence post and put it over there like that. <laughs> Wasn't that fast? And then the border grass there will just come and go around and connect the two fence posts. It'll be fabulous. And there we go. Now, the grass that I moved as I was moving it, I recall, is not border grass like what I have growing along right across from it. This is a native grass, and I don't recall what it is. Um, look at this weed. It's all in there. It was nice digging it out. I could pull all this weed out. So, I don't know. Any of you who've watched some of my older videos, do you remember me putting this in? Do you remember what I said it was? I'll, I'll have to figure it out. But it's here, and I love it. This little section here got chopped back um, when I was clearing the walkway, but it'll, it'll come back. And then, look at this whole little garden bed. And look, there is... I believe this is a little Joe Pie weed coming up. So, you know what? Maybe some of them will come back. And then let's chat a minute about my little wafer ash tree or the common hop tree. It is a host plant to the giant swallowtails, which is why I got it and added it to my butterfly garden. 
Um, this is a fabulous little tree. It's an understory tree. It will do well in a host of situations from full sun to full shade. But the sweet thing is it only gets about 15 feet tall and look how pretty it is. It's just a pretty little tree. It grows pretty slowly. This is its third year with me. And you can see all the larger that it is. But I have found eggs on it for the giant swallowtails. So highly recommend this little wafer ash tree to add to your butterfly garden. Well, not this one, but you know, one of your own. And now this just opens up possibilities to fill in this section here. And I like it so much better. You walk back so you can see the whole look. There's my shade garden up to the potting tree house or go this way down into the full sun garden where all the flowers, Mexican sunflowers and zinnias are and the butterflies. For this area right here where I took the fence post, you don't even notice it's missing. And as a matter of fact, since the cart is parking over there now and I don't have to bring it through, I'm actually going to roll this fence post out and make this walkway narrow and extend out this whole flower bed. It's going to be fabulous and it'll be coming in a future video. Also, I did order another lepidarium too and i'm gonna put that in the room i already know where it's gonna go it's gonna take some cleaning up and setting up but uh that'll be coming in a future video too look at my eyeshadow swatches mm -hmm. <laughs> i love makeup <laughs> okay so uh if you enjoyed this video um give it a thumb up tap the like button and um i'm gonna incorporate my little friend you probably already seen him to help us remember to tap the thumbs up like button. I'm gonna go get this baby edited and up for you tonight and I'll see you in the next one.